All right, next what we're gonna do, we're gonna roll our timer lever back so that it rolls our timer up. And we're gonna remove the leads from the timer. As you can see down there, the uh, your, your top lead on the timer is the one that goes to your to your motor. It's the go grounds to the motor. You can see it right there. And then your your bottom lead is the lead going over to the to the coil. We're gonna take the both those loose and set them out of our way there. And then we're gonna take our jumpers and we'll connect one jumper to this lead here and one here. Now if you don't have alligator clips and your leads are long enough on your voltmeter, you can just take your the end of the lead and stick it under that little tab right there. As long as they're on, your, both leads are connected to these, uh, the, the, to the connections on the timer, and they're not grounded to anything, they're touching just these, then that's fine. But alligator clips are, with some, uh, leads with alligator clips on them make it just a little easier. So that's gonna be our next move. Okay, all right. See, now I have my, my leads connected on the timer. Got, got these alligator clips. Got one there, one there. They're made up on my on my timer. They're not touching anything, not touching anything else. Just those I need to be connected to where they're not against the car, or against anything grounded. The other end, I've made up here, the alligator, the alligator clip. I've made them up on my uh, leads on my voltmeter. All right. The voltmeter here, it has a setting It'll buzz whenever continuity is made. So now that I've uh, got my leads hooked up, my next move, I'm going to take this timer uh, lever and set it to the center. It needs to be in the center as close as possible um, to get the uh, timing set correctly on this car. All right, now what we're going to do now is we'll go down here and there's my top dead center mark. There's my two outside marks, one there. One there. What I'm trying to do is to make that gap on that timer we talked about earlier. I want it to stay closed for the, from the time that flywheel comes around or that crank um, shaft with that wiper block comes around and hits those blades from there to there or as close as possible. Now, that's a good guideline. Some cars, like I like to run this one a little bit tighter than that. It may be, you know, somewhere a little half, maybe five inches, but. Five and a half is a good starting part, point, starting point, and then you can adjust it from there according to your car. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the adjustment. All right, turn my voltmeter to the continuity setting, and it'll whenever continuity is made, uh, it will ring or buzz. So I've got my timer set to center. And I'm going to slowly rotate my flywheel around. All right, you can hear it buzz. So there's top dead center, and then it just buzzes. See, so I, what I need to do is I need to increase my dwell time because it's too short. See there? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my timer, move it back so that I can get to my thumb screw a little bit. Here's where you can use a screwdriver or your fingers or if you want. But uh, you can turn most of them with your fingers. I'm going to go down here on this thumb screw and I'm going to turn it. Since I want to increase my dwell time, I'm going to tighten it down just a little bit, maybe a quarter turn. I'm going to come back up here, set my timer back to top dead center, and I'm going to see where I'm at with it. See, I have increased it a little bit. As you can see, it, it's a little bit better. So, and now what I'm going to do is just go back down here. I'm going to set my, I'm going to set it, my uh, flywheel to the outside here. Now, you see the, See the mark? That's my five and a half inch mark. Now, um, if I can reach around there and get to it good enough, which is kind of tough on some of these little cars, but I'm going to see if I can turn it until I hear it start buzzing, and that'll be a quick way, quicker way to set my timing. So I'm going to turn it and tighten it down. And then there she goes. So I got it pretty close now. Now you can just keep running it back and forth and adjusting if you'd like. But see, as I tighten it down, it increased my dwell time. So I still could get it a little bit tighter. And I think I will. I'm just going to tighten it a little bit more. I'm going to run my timer back so I can get my finger down there because I don't have to get much now. If I'm going to turn it just a touch, my 
Timer back on the top dead center. See where I'm at with it. And there it is. As you can see, I've got close to five and a half inches of dwell. Maybe a little less, but that's fine. That's about where I like it anyway. So, all right. Now, you know, you know, you've got to make sure you're on top dead. Make your uh, lever completely straight up and down. Now, one thing I failed to mention earlier, when after you take that spark plug out of that hole, uh, and this, this is the part about setting the brake, you want to be sure that piston stays on top dead center. So if you do not set that brake on that car, and when you get up, you lean on it or whatever, whether or not that belt's engaged or not, when that car rolls, it's liable to move that, crank, that, that uh, flywheel around a little bit because there's really no compression to stop it because the spark plug's out. So that's the reason you want to make sure you set that, that, that brake because you don't want that, that piston to move off of top dead center or to throw your whole uh, timing off. So, so now that we've got the timing, the, uh, the dwell time where we want it, there, see, as close as I'm not. Like I said, I like to run mine more close to a little bit better than, than uh, five inches, but not quite five and a half, but anywhere in there is good. And you can adjust it later a little bit more if you like. Now that we got it adjusted, we're gonna, we're gonna remove our leads and, uh, and hook our, hook our uh, wires back up. And I'll do that and we'll start, or I'll show you something else. Okay, I have removed my leads. And now, as you can see, I have my timer wires reconnected. I've got the top wire connected. It goes down to the engine ground here. And I have the, t the bottom wire off the, off the timer. Of course, it goes back to the coil. Now, something important here to look at is to be sure that these, these wires are not going to get in the flywheel as you're running down the track. That's not going to do you any good. Uh, cause you to come to a stop. So, anyway... Check those to be sure they're not going to come in contact. Run your timer lever back and forth through its travel and just watch those wires to be sure they're not going to get into the, to the flywheel. And it's a good idea every now and then to kind of double check those as you're going, you know, as you get, if you get time as you're running down the line, uh, get to a break or something there, check them every now and then. Uh, you know, I got tie strap here on my timer lever. It kind of holds them back and you can twist them out. But that's kind of important to be sure to do. Now, the way I've showed you to do this, there's other ways to check to get your dwell set. A lot of people like to use a spark plug, hook it to your coal. They'll lay the spark plug on the engine somewhere or ground it to a, uh, a pl uh, somewhere on the motor. And the only problem with that is, is if you do that and that spark plug for some reason loses the ground, well, you're going to build up some high, some very high voltages in your coal. Uh, coal in this car is here, there it is there, time coal, and if you build up high voltages in that coal, uh, running it with valid ground, that spark plug not grounded, you'll burn, you could possibly, and, and there's a good chance of burning the, uh, in, inside that coal, burning the coal up, opening up the, uh, opening up the wiring in the coal, so you don't want to do that, and it, so the way I've just showed you is a little, you know, it's a, it, to me it's a little safer. You don't take a chance of take, getting a pretty good um, shock off that coal either. So, uh, anyway, I hope this helps. And uh, I'll, if, if there's anything I need to add to it, somebody just let me know. But thank you very much.